John Nord. I'm going to show you some of the items I use in my artisan work today. Okay, first of all, I'm going to talk about something I use a lot of, and that's whiteout. Uh, whiteout's a really good tool to use in the artisan work. Um, let me show you here. You say you've got a piece here, and you're going to solder a bezel on this one side here where I'm going to mark it right in there and then you got in some engraving around over here well when you go to solder this bezel on that solder can run out of underneath there and get into your engraving lines and that just totally messes it up so you take the white out and you just paint it alongside that bezel over your engravings and then when the solder runs out into the engravings it keeps it from uh, sticking to the silver or nickel or copper or whatever you're soldering on and then you put it in your acid later on and it takes that white out off of it or you can still wool it off anyway that that really uh, has been a big help especially on spur building to keep the solder off the steel and things I don't want to. Next, uh, talk about the scroll saw blades. I use the laser gold, and these come in several different sizes. I use a number five uh, to cut heavy gauge, uh, anywhere from eighth inch, 14 gauge, 16 gauge, and I use uh, down around a number 02 to cut finer designs out and I've even gone to a 05 to cut real fine detail workout uh, the 05 is a real thin blade it can be turned easily inside small holes and corners the uh, 5 and the number 5 is a thick blade like I got here and it's big and thick it doesn't break easily this uh, 05 here it will break easily and you usually go through quite a few of these but uh, the laser gold has been a, a real good brand to use for me this is my old scroll saw and uh, I've had it from the beginning I've got a 1 by 6 uh, with a V cut out of it and I've got it bolted to my bench and that's all I use to cut on I don't have anything fancy I like the wood rather than a steel one because it doesn't scratch it when you're moving the silver around and uh, also um, it's easy, easily replaced I mean most people have a 1 by 6 laying around and when you're drilling through your silver and stuff you can drill it right here on this it doesn't hurt it and it doesn't hurt your drill bit so the wood's been great for me and it's real easy to to use and uh, let's see next I want to talk about uh, the uh, punch set I use I'm sorry let's talk about this caliper here uh, the caliper is real important um, it's marked off in one one thousandth of an inch and also one twentieth of a, a millimeter and it can be used to to measure the gauges of uh, silver width or sterling steel whatever and also can be used to mark different uh, measurements on the silver um, I don't know what I'd do without my caliper uh, very handy and uh, this is a quality one you want to get a good one and uh, I don't really like the digital ones I have one but I don't use it much next a good set of dividers um, spend some money on these get a good set you can uh, mark borders with these uh, around the edge of things and uh, also you can take your calipers and you can uh, mark off a specific design and uh, this will allow you to make that same mark over and over again on your silver but you can't really do without these in the jewelry work 
and artisan work. I also have a, a diamond lock uh, file here or a block on a on, with a handle on it. And uh, when I'm I use a lot of these silicone uh, wheels in my rotary tool and they get a fat edge on them after you use them for a while and you need a fine edge to do a lot of the work I do so I just run them on this diamond uh, surface and it cuts it down to a sharp edge again and uh, that's been real handy you can also sharpen the round pointed ones into a real fine point or the small silicone pencil ones into a fine point uh, this is a pair of forceps, and uh, I got these from a, a doctor that was actually stitching me up one time. And he just, uh, I said, what do you do with those? He said, I throw them away. And I said, well, could I have a pair? And he said, sure. And they're good at holding solder, holding all kinds of jewelry pieces and all. They click together and lock. This is a pair of uh, pliers uh, with uh, brass uh, jaws on them. And they don't mar up your silver when you're bending it or holding it and I use them pretty regular next I want to show you my punch set now uh, I got a punch set here and uh, it's a disc cutter and uh, it's got sizes from one inch down to quarter inch in different increments and uh, you can take um, your silver and you put it in the side of the slot there under the hole you want to use and then just put the punch down in it and hit it and it'll cut a disc out for you uh, real nice and round and uh, I'll show you one here uh, it's just a that's like a spur button disc I cut three quarter inch uh, you can make beads with these things cut out your disc and uh, then dome them with the domers and solder the two halves together and you got a bead this is my dome set it's got a dapping block with several uh, sizes in it and a lot of uh, daps, different sizes. You can make conchos with these, beads with them, uh, little half domes to, to solder onto jewelry, uh, lots of different things. Here's a spur button I made with them. Just put it down there and dome it just a little bit. Uh, conchos different things like that real handy for an artisan and especially a, a western artisan that does a lot of uh, spurs and conchos and things like that next thing i want to show you is my rotary tool i got it from a wood carver supply and it's a it's they're not real cheap but uh, it's been a real good one. I've had it about four or five years now. It goes from zero to 46,000 RPM. And uh, it has a forward and reverse. Uh, it's been very durable. It has comes with three chuck sizes. Um, you just uh, twist the hand piece to take the tools out of it and twist it back and it locks them in uh haven't had any trouble with it whatsoever i've got uh i use it to polish jewelry with small jewelry i use it to uh take the background out around engravings with uh, diamond bits and burrs uh you can set stones with it by putting uh, stone burrs in it uh these silicone wheels use them to polish out things uh, I've got a cutter wheel I put in it to cut off things or cut off wheel uh, have little grinding stones all kinds of tools that can go in it little silicone pins uh, this this thing's been about the handiest thing I've had there's all kinds of rotary tools there's air ones and everything else, but this one's all I've needed. It runs off 120 volts. These are the little diamond burrs I put in them. I got from a dentist. Uh, he just said he didn't need them. He'd give me all I wanted, so he gave me a whole bag full of them. He also gave me some carbide ones. Uh, anyway, uh, I couldn't do without my rotary tool. 
Next is my new engraver. I, I've had an air engraver for years and years, uh, but then they came out with the uh, pulse graver, and it's got a foot pedal down here, and you just uh, hit the foot pedal, and it takes off. It's all electric. It's just got a 120-volt plug-in, and it's got a handpiece that holds the same uh, engravers or gravers that the uh, air tools hold. Uh, it hammers, it sets stones, it has all kinds of adjustments. Um, I, I can do absolutely do anything I need to do with it. I've been very pleased and I've gotten rid of the air compressor that was sitting down under my feet. And uh, even though I had a silent one, it was still a lot of extra equipment in the, in the shop. Um, you can stipple with it. Uh, you can sculpture with it, bright cut, all types of things. I've been very pleased with it. Next thing I want to show you is my uh, microscope. And it's another tool that's pretty important to me, especially uh, when you get older uh, you don't see things quite as good so uh, you got to get down and uh, real close to these engravings to do a really good job and it's very adjustable in and out I only spent about four hundred fifty dollars on this uh, microscope I think it's a AM scope but it's been a really good one it comes with a LED light uh, that was fully adjustable and from bright to dim you can turn it off or on it's got a camera port if you want to put a camera in it to uh, film your engravings. It's got uh, two different, uh, well it actually has three or four different adjustments on focus. Uh, a fine focus and a larger focus and then an individual eye focus. It has all types of adjustability on it you can see. It has a weighted base so it just sits there on your bench. It doesn't have to be bolted down. This is my jewelry vise. Uh, you got to have one of these if you're engraving. Uh, it spins within itself, but I've got it locked down and got it sitting on a turntable. Um, that's so I can center it up underneath my scope. Uh, so when I'm turning it, it doesn't go out of my view. So to do that, you have to put it on a turntable. And you have to level up your piece to keep it rotating under your eyesight otherwise it goes in and out of your views and you have trouble with it uh, I've got several attachments for this vise I've made a bunch of different attachments to hold uh, guns and knives and spurs and rowels and everything else and uh, you can see how, how it works and slides around uh, heavy duty item and uh, a must-have for engraving. It just locks and unlocks with this wrench that it comes with. Next I want to show you a demagnetizer. If you're engraving steel and your gravers pick up a, a magnetism, well the chips stick to it and they get in your way of seeing the point of your engraver they get in the way of cutting smoothly because the chip will get in front of it and it'll skip you have to demagnetize them and you can buy simple demagnetizers but i couldn't get them to work so i uh made this one i, I found it on youtube and it's just a, a half inch disc and with some magnets on it and I'll tell you here about it in just a second I don't put it in this drill this drill won't hold it but I've got a half inch drill I put it in and I spin it real fast and while it's spinning I put the draw the graver underneath it and uh, it has north and south poles and that switching of the poles rotating above the graver uh, demagnetizes the way I understand it and I just uh, welded a half inch rod to a round steel disc I've got 
some magnet pieces. I figured out what was uh, north and south poles on them and I siliconed them to the disc and then I taped over them with some duct tape and I put it in either my drill press or a half inch drill and I just spin it above the engraver and it takes the magnetism completely out of it and then my engravers stay clean when I'm engraving steel silver and all won't stick you know but steel does next thing I want to show you is my solder station uh, some of y'all seen it on my films and probably wondering about it it's a two and a three eighths pipe with gussets welded to the bottom and it's bolted to the floor underneath the flooring and uh, then I have a two and seven eighths collar with a lockdown bolt and a bracket coming off to hold the torch and I've got a pan I bought at the feed store that's uh, enameled real well and I drilled a hole through the center of it I used a brass screw and washer and a rubber washer and uh, put a threaded hole in the center of my collar and I just bolt this pan down to it and that way it doesn't leak and it rotates around if I want it to and uh, this has worked for me uh, for light soldering in my studio I'm building a new studio with a uh, um, less hazards uh, for soldering but this is the way I've been able to solder in the studio I have I don't recommend it to anyone because of the hazards but it's worked for me um, this is my air torch it's a uh, acetylene air and it is runs off of uh, acetylene in a B tank that I've got bolted to the wall and uh, it mixes with air and it'll get real hot and I've got two tips uh, I use this for spurs buckles jewelry everything I do I use this and uh, I have a uh, several of these brackets that I put in the uh, pan like this you can see this one here and it's probably the one I use the most and it's just a welded bracket and I have a, a, it holds my fire brick on top of it. I can use it with the fire brick, without the fire brick. I've got a soldering pad I set on it. And uh, that, that's been a great help. I've got another one here with expanded metal on top that uh, I just wired it to the top of the stand. And uh, I can, uh, set my water down here in the pan and I can just drain right through it cool things off I can put my torch underneath the screen and heat something up from the bottom side with it uh, a lot of applications work best that way uh, I also have this rotary pan with uh, I think it's like a volcanic rock in it that I, I bought and it has tweezers mounted on the side of it and it'll hold objects you can stick your objects down inside that rock and it won't get hot if you've got a previously soldered piece on it and it's got just a bearing plate on the bottom that lets it spin and that's been a real good third hand for me soldering but with this pan you can uh, cool things off with the sponge and the water don't go everywhere the soldering don't drop into the flooring. This here is my a real useful item. It's a U-bolt with another bolt welded on top of it. And the way it's made, it uses uh, just the leverage of it, you know, leaning down on top of your piece to hold it. And uh, I know a lot of artisans have two or three of these made up and they use them all the time. But it'll hold a piece in place while you're uh, soldering another piece onto it like this concho here uh, you can set this right down on top and then it'll hold it there in the right spot while you solder it down and it's just another way of clamping pieces together but it's a pretty easy and simple one to make anybody can make that you can solder it together weld it together uh, I'm going to show you how I clean things up after I solder I'm not big on pickling uh, I use I've always used 25% uh, muriatic acid in a beaker and uh, baking soda to neutralize the acid it's worked for me 
uh, I know it, it's smelly, and uh, if you spill it, you know, it can really uh, eat through your floor in a hurry. But uh, I'm real careful with it, and that's what I use. It cleans things up real nice. It'll clean most of my pieces up in five minutes or less. It takes all the solder, I mean the flux off of it. And then you put it in the baking soda and it neutralizes the acid and it's, you can hold it after that. And I usually dip it in some water just to clean the residue off of it. Uh, and it'll take a white out off if you leave it in there longer. But I just have these uh, beakers I bought from a chemical supply and I just keep them here on the shelf. And of course, like I say, I'm real careful with it not to spill it. I've got brass tongs I go in and out of the acid with. Next thing I want to show you is the uh, conversion process of this station I have. You just lift this off and uh, I got my uh, vise fitted up with a 2 and 7 8 pipe and a lockdown bolt and I just stick it on top of this and then I have a, a vise to use and uh, no you can't really bear down and bend heavy steel on it or anything like that but jewelry work uh, the kind of stuff that I'm doing here it works great and I lock it down so it don't turn and uh, then I open it up and it's pretty stout and I can take a piece of square brass wire say I'm gonna make a rope for a buckle I can put it in this vise and I can get my drill, hook it into the end of the wire and spin it and I've got my twisted wire that I need. You can do some light hammering on it on the back end of it. Um, I also have my uh, cuff mandrel or bracelet mandrel that I put into it and it's stout enough to have me hammer on it and bend my bracelets on it and uh, I've got a piece welded onto my mandrel to, to so it can go in the vise. also have a bracelet domer that uh, I put into it and uh, I dome bracelets with it. I also use this domer to bend the tongues of buckles to give them a nice slope up to the top of the buckle. I also have my benders that I've made from uh, trailer balls, upside down trailer balls. And I have a wide jaw one, I have a narrow jaw one. And these benders you can find on YouTube on how to make them. They're pretty easy to make. They're real handy. And you can bend wire with them. 3 16th rod with them uh, do all sorts of things I've even I've been my belt keepers on them sometimes when I don't want to uh, go out to the shop and do some hammering uh, the wider one uh, bends uh, up to 16 gauge and also 3 16th rod uh, I think this is the narrow draw one here. It's been I'm bending a piece of uh, 22 gauge or 18 gauge, I believe. Uh, anyway, they're real handy. I use them all the time. And then you just take it back off, and uh, I can uh, put my pan back on here. And, I'm and I usually keep the pan on there because I set things in there all the time. This is a magnetic holder I wanted to show you. It's got an earth magnet on the bottom and a pair of uh, C-clamps on top. It's got a couple of adjustments so I can adjust it. I just stick it in this pan and man, it's stout. It was not coming out of that pan unless I get on it and lift it out of it. And I put spurs on this to have room to work around them. And... Uh, I also put buckles on it sometimes to solder the overlays on. Uh, it's just a great third hand. 
and it does it's not a big hink sink uh, spurs work great because spurs are hard to hold to uh, sorter items onto so uh, it's been a a great help and uh, couldn't do without that easy to build too uh, over here on this side of my shop I have a leather bench with a piece of marble I don't do a lot of leather work but I do do some and uh, I've got mallets and I've got a, a drawer here with several leather stamps and leather tools and dies that I use to make I have made belts and holsters and bill folds and such uh, I have my jewelry cleaner here it's a ultrasonic cleaner and it puts out uh, 42,000 Hertz of ultrasonic waves and what I really like about it is you can throw something in here after you've polished it and it takes the polish out of the cracks and crevices of the engravings and that's been a big help I used to have to use uh, WD-40 uh, this is my industrial uh, soldering iron it's a 300 uh, 200 watt industrial strength and uh, you can uh, it's it's powerful enough to uh, melt 400 degree solder and tin the back of pieces uh, for overlay uh, it won't do anything over 400 degree solder but uh, I've used this a lot for tinning pieces to put on and you just clamp them down heat them up and they self sorter basically Hey, I hope I've helped you uh, with some of the items you can use in your studio, and I sure appreciate you tuning in. Be sure and like my video.